Assalamu alaikum and hi everyone. This section will be discussing a case under international investment law and we will try to derive important principles from the case. So today's case is Metalclad, a United States corporation against Mexico. So this is how the award looks like. This dispute was brought before the arbitral tribunal constituted under Chapter 11, or we call it as the Investment Chapter, of the North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA. So let's look at a little bit of the background of this case. Metalclad received from the Mexican federal government a permit to construct a hazardous waste landfill in Guadalcazar, Mexico. But five months after the construction began, Metalclad was notified by the municipality that it was unlawfully operating without a municipal permit. So Metalclad applied for the permit but was rejected. Later, the governor issued an ecological decree to declare a protected natural area, which makes the landfill site operated by Metalclad permanently closed. Okay, so for under this case, there are two basic articles which Metaclad alleges violation of. Okay, one is Article 1105 about uh, fair and equitable treatment, and the other one is 1110, that is on indirect expropriation. Article 1105 of NAFTA reads, each party shall accord to investments of investors of another party treatment in accordance with international law, including fair and equitable treatment and full protection and security. So a central point in this case was whether, in addition to the government permit, a municipal permit was it required. Metalclad was led to believe that hazardous waste matters was a permit given by the federal government and that the municipality has no authority. The fair and equitable treatment is one of the most controversial standards of protection in international investment agreements. But in this case, the tribunal did not construe into that matter in detail, especially on what is the minimum standard of treatment. Well, you will see those discussions later in other cases, for example, in Cargill against Mexico and Merrill against Canada. So the tribunal in this case found that Mexico failed to ensure a transparent and predictable framework for metal clad's business planning and investment, and therefore demonstrate a lack of orderly process and timely disposition in relation to an investor part of a party under NAFTA. And therefore the tribunal holds that Metaclad was not treated fairly or equitable under NAFTA. Article 1110 on expropriation and compensation in NAFTA states that no party may directly or indirectly nationalize or expropriate an investment of an investor of another party in its territory or take a measure tantamount to nationalization or expropriation of such an investment, except for, there are few exceptions, one, for public purpose, secondly, for a non-discriminatory basis, on a non-discriminatory basis, in accordance with due process of law, and on payment of compensation. Expropriation under NAFTA does not only include direct expropriation, but uh, which involves the transfer of title, in favor of the host states, but it also includes incidental or indirect interference with the property which has the effect of depriving the owner in whole or in significant part the use of the economic benefit of the property. Okay, now let's look at the text of the award of Metaclad and see how the tribunal construed indirect expropriation. The tribunal said, that the measures taken together with the representations of the Mexican federal government on which Metalclad relied and the absence of uh, substantive basis for the denial by the municipality of the local construction permit amounted to indirect expropriation. Okay, the tribunal also said further that indirect expropriation had taken place because of the totality of circumstances that made the work stop. Next comes the question of compensation. For this, the tribunal referred to Article 1110.2 of NAFTA, which reads inter alia that 
compensation shall be equivalent to the fair and market value of the expropriated investment. But the question is, how do we access fair market value? Here, Metalclad suggested an approach that is the discounted cash flow analysis of future profits. But the tribunal highlighted that since there was no track record of prior market because the project was expropriated even before Metalclad began its operation or the situation of Metalclad at that time was not going concern, so that could not be applied. Metalclad failed to provide a realistic calculation of discounted cash flow analysis. And the tribunal was of the view that reference to Metalclad's actual investment would be an appropriate approach. So, if you want to discuss further on the case of Metalclad, have a look at some important points. Number one, the challenges of state regulatory power, that is the sovereign power to regulate. For example, in this case, on one side, the investment protection covered by investment treaty, and on the other side, the government's effort to protect groundwater contamination. Secondly, the standard of treatment, the minimum standard of treatment for fair and equitable treatment. And thirdly, the principle of legitimate expectation in relation to indirect expropriation. So thank you. I hope you have enjoyed the video.